Great. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I think you all deserve a little bit of levity today. So have you heard the one about the burglar creeping through the dark house at night? And he's looking for whatever he can take. So he finds a wallet on the dresser and he empties it and takes the cash out, puts it in his pocket. And then he hears this voice, Jesus is watching. And he thought that can't be true. And so he keeps walking and he sees a jewelry box and he helps himself to diamond earrings and gold bracelets, puts them in his pocket. And then there's that voice again, be careful. Jesus is watching and but he moves on and he sees a, a little safe in the room and he works on the combination and cracks it after a couple of minutes pulls out antique coins and gold bars and then there's that voice Jesus is watching so he flicks on his flashlight to where that voice is coming from and in the corner is this large blue parrot and the burglar says who are you parrot says, I'm Moses. And the burglar says, what idiot would name a parrot Moses? Parrot says, well, the same idiot who named his Rottweiler Jesus. <laughs> Welcome to Stewardship Sunday. When I was growing up, my family and I went to church every Sunday. It was the 8.30 mass at St. Michael's, and you could find the four of us, my mom, dad, sister, and me, sitting in the fourth pew on the left side. St. Michael's was a small red brick church with a white wooden steeple. Founded in the 1850s, it was a parish whose early members were coal miners, steel workers, and their families. By the time I showed up with my parents in the 1960s, the church was holding four masses every Sunday. Despite my family's regular presence, church for us was just a Sunday thing. Our so-called real lives didn't intersect with it much on the other days. Fast forward to 1990, when the adult Tom and Sandy arrived at St. Brendan's. The vibe and the level of involvement could not have been more different. St. Brendan's had been launched only three years earlier in 1987. It had only a few dozen members and no building. Imagine the energy and foresight, not to mention the daring do, I love that word, that it took for the handful of founders, most of them women, to launch this parish. No money, no land, no congregation, and no guarantee of success. But St. Brendan's was born because they were on a mission. In those early years, the only service was at 5 p.m. Saturday in space lent to St. Brendan's for free from Heritage Presbyterian Church. After a few visits, it was plain to us that everybody did a little bit of everything. The choir were the readers, the readers were the ushers, the ushers taught Sunday school, and everyone, kids and grown-ups alike, played in the chime choir. You get the idea. Like a toddler taking first steps, St. Brendan's was trying to get on its feet. And those several dozen people were on a mission. As more visitors joined, it was clear that St. Brendan's needed its own building. They made a plan to build the first St. Brendan's, which is the space we now use as the social hall. Construction cost $750,000, and the building was consecrated in 1992, only five years after the parish was founded. Even then, though, St. Brendan's mission has always been about more than itself. From day one, Brendanites agreed that the parish would set aside 10% of its income and send it out the door to efforts and programs that alleviate human need and suffering. We continue that tithe called Cries Advocacy to this day. It's in our bylaws and it says much about who we are. Call it the silent mission or quiet mission. Cries is overseen by parishioners and it operates in lean times or times of plenty 
without most of us even thinking about it. That first church building served us well for 10 years, but as attendance grew, so did the need for more space, a larger sanctuary and new chapel, a lower level with classrooms and meeting rooms, a kitchen large enough to serve a bigger congregation. St. Brendan's broke ground on a $1.3 million addition, the space you're sitting in right now, four days after the 9-11 attacks on the United States. In that dark time, St. Brendan's proved again that its truest sense of mission was in serving God's people. In the fall of 2001, the church sent two rounds of volunteers to Ground Zero. They spent days feeding, comforting, and praying with exhausted relief workers who were trying to cover the human remains in the rubble. Called that one a mission of mercy. By now you can see where I'm going with this church on a mission theme. St. Brendan's has always been a congregation driven by passion and determination. As a young upstart parish, St. Brendan's defied the odds and built the physical homes that serve our community. But what's more important is all the activity that takes place inside these walls. In the words of our mission statement, Jesus said, I have come to give life, life in all its fullness. Our mission is the realization of fullness through the worship of God, service to the world, active concern for each other, and education to expand mind and spirit. We see Brendanites living out this mission day after day. Yesterday, a dozen of them spent the morning making sandwiches for needy folks served by the Neighborhood Resilience Project in Pittsburgh. They were on a mission. On Monday evening, 23 Brendanites gathered in the chapel the night before the election to pray, to hope, to lean on each other at a moment of great uncertainty. They too were on a mission. Last Sunday, the choir performed a beautiful rendition of the Beatitudes, then rocked the joint with When the Saints Go Marching In. They, every week, are on a mission. In ministries and activities both rare and routine, the members of St. Brendan's move with purpose and commitment and not just on Sundays. We teach English, register voters, deliver meals, and study the Bible. We hike trails, grow vegetables, explore church history, and visit ailing parishioners. We're a fixture at the Pride Parade, a crusader against gun violence, and advocates for our children and youth. When you see cooks making soup for hours in the kitchen, they're on a mission. When you see fiber crafters or fiction lovers meeting in the library, they're on a mission. When you see children and their teachers heading downstairs to Sunday school, they're on a mission, just as those kids' parents were on a personal mission at home to get the little ones to church. What's your mission at St. Brendan's? You have dozens to choose from, and just look at the photos on the bulletin board in the narthex. Those ministries exist because of the hours, sweat, and yes, dollars that you contribute. As you think about how much to give in 2025, please consider putting it in a pledge. That helps us budget for next year. But if you can't pledge, don't worry. Your generosity at whatever level or frequency is still graciously accepted and used to drive these missions. St. Brendan's is young. At age 37, its best days are still ahead. With vigorous leadership, your commitment, and some divine grace, imagine all that we can do. The sky's the limit. Be part of the mission. And God bless you, and God bless St. Brendan's.